Good morning, everyone. You know, Christmas typically brings about an incredible burst of light and love with its traditions, sparkling lights, presents under the tree, and time spent with family. And maybe you're like me, and by January 2020, you had already bought multiple rolls of wrapping paper at the post-Christmas sales so that you'd be sure to have enough for all the gift exchanges and parties. And then things quickly took a turn in March, and as the months have passed on, the reality of our Christmas this year has shifted a lot. Typically, my family gets together at my late grandmother's house on Christmas morning to eat Mexican breakfast and open our brown paper bag stockings together and participate in our family gift exchange. But this year, you know, things are shifting a little and we're doing all our meals at home with our own families. Um, we're doing sanitized Christmas gift porch drop-offs and a family Zoom. And sure, there's a lot of loss from not having those in-person family traditions, but there's also so much love thread through the choices that we're all making to keep our loved ones and coworkers safe and healthy during the pandemic. You know, this next Friday isn't going to look or feel quite the way we expected. Sure, our pants will still be stretchy, but for other reasons. And we'll definitely wear our Christmas jammies anyway because COVID life, you know. But while it's not going to be what we expected, it's vital that we don't miss out on the opportunity to find God's love in the middle of it all. Maybe we can use this time to quiet our minds and spirits from the hustle and bustle to shut out the chaos and let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. I actually mentioned to my dad the other day that maybe instead of even giving physical gifts, we could just write cards to each other with encouraging words and share what we love about each other because we really just don't do that enough. You know, and in this Advent time of expecting and waiting and preparation, what happens when the thing that you're expectantly waiting for doesn't look the way you thought it would? Let me know in the chat. How do you handle life when the thing that you're expectantly waiting for doesn't look the way you thought it would? You see, living through this pandemic and the birth of Christ actually have something in common. It wasn't what was expected. If Mary had been trying to plan a family around the book, What to Expect When You're Expecting, she'd have had to throw that book away after that special visit from the angel. Mary wasn't expecting God to call her to bear Jesus in her womb. She wasn't planning to be the mother of the King of Kings. She surely faced worry, sacrifice, and isolation from others as she rose to the call of God's love in this situation. But still, she said yes to embracing God's love. She was still willing to be a part of the bigger story that God was writing. And every day she said yes, and every day God uses this story of the birth of Christ to say yes, I will find ways for my love to reach you in the most unexpected circumstances and seasons of life. Now our Messiah came in the form that no one expected. Everyone was expecting a, a king in power, um, this huge overarching presence, and what they got was a baby in a manger. He was birthed in a way that no one expected. He was raised in a peasant's home and not the expected golden palace. God chose to partner with Mary to co-create the living God and be a significant influence in the formation of Jesus. Now that was very unexpected. But the great thing is, and the good news is, that he's still moving amid the unexpected even today. And now it's our turn. Now we get to be like Mary and embrace God's love and share it with the hurting world around us. So many of our brothers and sisters are feeling the stress, pain, 
hurt and despair of this pandemic and just life in general. And God is birthing unexpected things in us to share his love with them. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. In what ways can you share God's love in unexpected ways during unexpected seasons of life? One thing I've done quite recently is to become the guardian of my two teen nieces for a season of life. It isn't easy, and it wasn't what I was expecting to do at the beginning of this year, but I can already see God at work through it. God has used everyday, ordinary people in the most unexpected circumstances to help provide for us each step of the way, and I see his love shining through when they're singing in the shower, when they're dancing to Selena, or whenever we're talking together as we enjoy a nice home-cooked meal together. In these particular circumstances, when I put myself in the place of Mary in this Christmas story, being asked to mentor, parent, guide, and love unconditionally, a child that may not be with you forever, a child that is not necessarily completely yours. Um, I am so glad that I said yes, and I am so glad for this opportunity to love and parent and mentor these beautiful young ladies. And maybe that's not where you're at right now, but one thing that we can all consider participating in for the rest of this year and into the next is an organization called Seedling Mentors. Check out this quick video. Seedling is a school-based mentoring program for children of the incarcerated. Being a mentor is so important because it can change lives. It can open doors for the mentee and it can open windows for the mentor. My role as Seedling is mentor director and therefore I nurture the match. I offer advice and counsel the mentors so that they can employ mentoring best practices. And hopefully these will become transformational for the children in the future. The reason I love being a mentor is coming to school every week and seeing Breon's face light up when I say, hey Breon, you want to go grab lunch? Usually by the time I finish that sentence, he's already running off to the counselor's office where we eat. So seeing his smile every week is really what, uh, what inspires me to keep coming back. When I started as a seedling mentor, I really didn't know what to expect. It's been interesting to see our relationship develop. I, I've really enjoyed that my mentee looks forward to seeing me every week and also to create and share memories with someone that I would not have met otherwise. Being a mentor is so important because it provides a caring adult who's there just for that child. A child that doesn't necessarily know when or if their parent is coming home. To see that child smile when you come into the school and they greet you is extremely rewarding. That relationship is vital to the child's development and their hope for a bright future. Our goal at Seedling is to increase the number of children served to over a thousand in the next six to seven years while also increasing quality services for the kids. My role models are my mom, my dad, my aunt, and my grandma and Ben. Having a mentor is exciting. Seedling recruits volunteers from the community, then matches them with eligible children and offers ongoing support for both the children and the mentors. Seedling mentors provide stable, long-term relationships for the students that can help them develop and maintain positive attitudes towards school. And because we value this next generation so much, we wanna make this on-ramp very easy for you. 
Directly following this service, Seedling is going to host an interest Zoom meeting to provide you with even more practical information and answer questions. So if this sounds like something you might enjoy and you have just a little time to share God's love with children in our community, we'd love for you to jump onto the Zoom. Icon fam, as we continue to live through this season of the unexpected, let's all make a collective choice to embrace the love that God has for us and to share it with others in any way we can. If not through seedling, then in your home or your workplace, reimagine the love of Christ this Christmas and watch how God works through the unexpected. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for each and every person watching this stream today, God, and I ask that you would be with them in the unexpected. Father, as we're all facing different family dynamics, work dynamics, personal life dynamics, Father, there's one thing that we need in the middle of all of this is you. The one thing we need to embrace in the middle of all this is your love, the understanding that you have not forgotten us, the understanding that you have not given up on us, the understanding, God, that you are here to meet us and birth new things in us as we prepare for this new year. God, help us all to look to you and to embrace you in our everyday life and not let the things of this world overshadow the great story that you're writing in our lives, God. We love you so much and we give you all the glory for today and every day after. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, thank you so much, Amanda, for that encouraging message. Um, I am just going to take a second here um, and uh, go into the chat. And just because on the different platforms, people can't see each other's comments. And so I just want to take a second and um, just read some of the responses um, to the questions that Amanda asks, which are really, really great questions. Um, the first one was about how do you, you know, how do you handle disappointment when things don't go as expected. And Locke and Sabrina said that that's hard. Disappointment hit, hits hard. Uh, Jenny and Mark, uh, they said they look for God to fill up that black hole um, with himself. Uh, Kat says, I breathe, reassess, and try not to be too disappointed. Hindsight sometimes reveals that it was better the way it happened or there was a silver lining. And that's so true. Um, sometimes when things don't go as planned, sometimes we can look back and see that it, maybe it was actually for the best that things didn't work out that way. Um, I know for me, I struggle with disappointment and sometimes I tend to have a more, I will say it's a realistic view. Dan says that it's pessimistic, but I think sometimes it's a defense mechanism because it's like, well, if I kind of expect the worst, and then the best happens, then I'm just really excited rather than expecting the best and then being disappointed. That can be a lot harder for me to deal with. So I totally relate to that. And then the other question, um, oh, what Catherine Sawyer said, she tries to remind herself that God's plan doesn't always line up with hers, no matter how badly she wants it to. And then the next question uh, that Amanda asked was, how can we practice love during this season? How can we love others well? And I just, I loved the responses that a lot of you gave because they're all really simple, but really meaningful. Um, Kat said, by practicing kindness and being supportive, being willing to be vulnerable and empathetic. I think empathizing with one another is one of the greatest ways that we can love each other well. Um, Locke and Sabrina said uh, they drop off cookies to neighbors. I mean, it's such a simple gesture, but I think goes a long way sometimes. Blake said, uh, giving of time to call up a friend or family member and just let them know uh, that you're thinking of them. 
Dan said many times it's the small things that matter most, checking in with loved ones, thoughtful messages, um, things of that nature. So yeah, just, Amanda, I'm really grateful for you reminding us that um, sharing love doesn't always have to be these grand gestures or um, doesn't have to uh, look a certain way, but that we can all uh, be intentional about practicing showing love to one another and that sometimes it is as simple as a phone call or a text message um, that it can be in the small gestures um, just reminding everyone that they're being thought of that they're being loved that even in a time especially right now when we all feel incredibly disconnected from one another uh, just those those simple ways of reminding each other that you are being thought of you are loved and that we are still connected we still belong to each other even even if we're not uh, physically with each other very much. So um, I know that I'm going to go into this week encouraged and looking for ways that I can practically show love to people around me. And one of those ways um, is what you've heard about now a couple different times is with this organization called Seedling. And I'm really excited for us to have the opportunity to partner with them again. Uh, we have partnered with them in the past and uh, their one of their directors Dan reached out to me and just said hey we are looking for we have 12 kids who paperwork is filled out they're ready to be matched but they just don't have enough mentors and he said would icon consider um, you know partnering with us again to see if we can't get some of these kids matched with a mentor and um, it's really cool this year because they're doing it very differently obviously in COVID times um, it's all virtual so really it's I feel like a lot easier for people to be able to mentor because you can do it from your own home and uh, they in the zoom call that we're going to go on in a little while here they um, will explain all the information but they have some really cool ways that they are doing this uh, virtually where they have it set up to where uh, you can actually play games like virtually with your mentee um, and it's just a really great opportunity for us to show love it's a simple way I, I believe it's just once a week for like I don't know, maybe 30 minutes um, that we can show love to a kid who really needs that and be able to uh, be uh, just a support to them as they're walking through having uh, one of their parents who is incarcerated and they're just really unsure of what's going to happen and how long their parent is going to be um, away. And so it would just be a really great way for us as the church to be able to show love to uh, some of these kids. So um, here in about 25 minutes at 1030 is when the Zoom call starts. So this gives you a chance to take a little break, maybe need to grab some more coffee, uh, maybe need to get a quick snack or something. Uh, but the Zoom link is in the chat. Uh, for this uh, for the zoom meeting and so at 10 30 whoever is interested this isn't you joining the zoom call doesn't mean you're saying yes for sure I'm gonna do this this is just simply for us to be able to get more information so that we can make a decision you know make the best decision uh, possible so I would love to see a lot of you um, join on this call i'm going to be there and they will be there to answer any questions and even for those of you that are out of town that don't live in texas um i i would encourage you to still hop on if you're interested in this because since it's virtual this might be a great opportunity for you to be able to get involved too um so yeah lock and sabrina said yeah we can find matches for a dozen kiddos i believe so too i believe so too so yeah, um, hopefully I will see you all at 1030 on that Zoom call. So go ahead, take a quick break, do whatever you need to do, and then we will see you back um, for that Zoom call. Otherwise, uh, we will see you not next week. We'll see you the first week of January, and I hope that all of you have an incredible Christmas and a really happy new year. Get service. The kids service, yes. <laughs> yes. This is why, again, this is why Dan is here. Uh, we are still having our e-kids service. It'll just be pushed back um, for after that Zoom meeting. I believe Amanda has it set at 1045 right now, uh, but just kind of be, be watching, but that will happen after the Zoom call. So am I forgetting anything else? You're good. And Dan doesn't have any... 
he didn't have any music to like send us off into 2021. You guys, we get to say goodbye to 2020. That's a really big deal. Not that everything is going to magically change like once the new year comes, but I am so ready to say goodbye to 2020. And I'm sure many of you are too. So yeah, he's, it's not, nope, he's got nothing. Sorry, man, you're such a disappointment today with, you know, nothing. Nope. All right. Well, I can't read. (laughs) Kelly stole my mouse. All right. See you guys later. (laughs) We'll see you later.